this video we're going to do an application of the Pythagorean theorem and this will pertain to uh, college algebra um, more than likely you will not approach a problem in your high school geometry course where the algebra is this intense and what we'll do um, we're going to end up with some fairly big numbers uh, to solve a quadratic and I'm going to use the TI-83 and TI-84 I'm uh, going to reinforce that skill of being able to graph and find the solutions, or in this case, one solution to our quadratic equation. But first of all, we've got to form the quadratic equation. And uh, what we have here is we have at a point on the ground, 70 feet from the base of a tree, the distance to the top of the tree is 2 feet more than 3 times the height of the tree. Find the height of the tree. And, and what we're going to have here is typically these tree problems, you're talking about something being on the ground, and then we're trying to find some distance, or in this case a height. It, it does revolve around right triangles. Um, this, this piece right here will represent our tree. You don't have to draw a tree, but uh, our tree is sitting over here. And um, then we have a point on the ground, and that's where this sentence starts off at a point on the ground 70 feet from the base of a tree. So it's out at the base of our tree is, let me slide that over a little bit. So there's the base of our tree, right there exactly, right here. And here's our point. This point right here in blue is 70 feet from the base of the tree. Uh, it also says the distance to the top of the tree is two feet more than three times the height of the tree. What that's referring to, the distance to the top of the tree, is talking about this point right here. The distance from this point to the top of the tree is two feet more than three times the height of the tree. Two feet more than three times the height of the, th height of the tree, we can think of it as 3h plus 2. Three times the height, there's three times the height, and then it's two more than that. Now the reason why I use the H here is because the question says find the height of the tree. So we're trying to find H over here. We're trying to find this side. That's the ultimate goal. And uh, what this, what we can do now since we have a right triangle is we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We can call this A, this B, and this C. And the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, if you're using the calculator, you can do very little work. As long as you can set these pieces up right here, um, you can let the calculator do the rest once you plug everything into your formula. And I'm going to show you that first of all. So a squared, that represents h squared. Plus b squared. b is 70, so we have 70 squared. And this is equal to c squared. c is the 3h plus 2. And squared. Now, in all honesty, if you're going to go to the calculator, and if, if I ask you, if I did ask you to use the calculator, um, showing minimal work for this problem, we could go straight to the calculator right now and type this in, and we can get a solution. And uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. Then I'm going to come back in a minute. We're going to do a little bit of algebra, and we're going to still see how we can get the same answer. So let's grab our calculator real quick. And uh, what we can do now, we can't use the H's, but we can use X instead of H. So therefore, I'm going to go to Y1. I'm going to type in one side of my equation, H squared plus 70 squared. Now, th that is, we're going to use an X here, so we can do X squared. And I'll tell you what, I I'm, I'm not going to type 70 squared in here. I'm going to type in 4,900 because 70 squared is 4,900. But you could just type in 70 squared right there. It'll give you the same thing. And now type in your right-hand side, 3x plus 2 all squared. Make sure you use parentheses there. And here's the only thing about this, though. The, the disadvantage about using the calculator is it might not be uh, as cut and dry for finding the answer. Um, we've we got to find where these two graphs cross each other. And we can have a problem with that because our graph might not be clear. It might not e be easy to see. I'm going to zoom six, and uh, that, that's a common zoom, zoom six, zoom standard, and I see that, and I see pretty much nothing else. Um, that's, that's not very beneficial to me. Uh, there's another zoom feature. We're trying to find two curves. All I see is one curve right here. We're trying to find two. So I'm going to zoom, and I'm going to go to zoom fit, and that's actually zoom zero on my calculator. 
So I'm going to press zoom fit, press enter on that, and give it a second. And you're going to see two curves now. There's one curve across the top, and there's the second curve across the bottom. So we do see two curves. Um, hopefully you did see that line go across the top. If not, maybe you can see it right there. And then we have this curve at the bottom. But we're trying to find where they cross. What we can do from here is we can at least try to zoom out a little bit. So we'll go to zoom out. And now you got to press enter again once it goes back to this screen. And let's give it a second. There's our first curve. And here's our second curve. All right, that's very nice. I'm happy with the way this looks because I actually see two intersections. Now remember, the goal was to find the height of the tree. We did use H for the height, but uh, now since we went to the calculator, we actually ended up using X instead of H. So we're trying to find a value of X at these intersections. However, I don't want to use this one because notice, is, notice X is negative on this side of the Y axis. I don't want that one. I want this one right here. So what we can do now is we can go to second, we can press trace and we want to find where our graphs intersect. So I'm going to press enter on that and I'm just going to scroll over here a little bit. I've mentioned this in previous videos. Um, using left and right, zoom out a little bit, using the left and right arrows on the calculator will move the dot along that curve. Now if I press up or down, watch this, if I, I'm going to press up, notice it jumped to the other curve and now I can start moving left or right on it. I just want to remind you that left and right will move along the curve. Notice I'm moving along the curve. But now if I press up or down, I can swap back and forth between my two curves. Just a reminder there. So we're close to our intersection. I'm going to press enter once, twice, three times. And as you can see here, it does give us a nice answer of 24. And I really don't care about that. Remember, we were trying to find X because X represented H over here which is the height of the tree. So um, I'm just gonna write down here, calculator. And we got X is equal to 24, which implies that the height of the tree is 24 feet. Now, what I wanna do though, I wanna go a little bit further with this right here. And I wanna show you, you're still gonna get the same answer. Um, so let's take that right there. Let's copy it over to a new page. I'm going to show you another way to get 24. And I'm trying to also uh, show you how to get real comfortable with this calculator. So taking that right here, let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, this becomes h squared plus 4900 is equal to, and uh, don't forget though, 3h plus 2 squared means 3h plus 2 times 3h plus 2. And if we were to FOIL this out, 3H times 3H is 9H squared. 3H times 2 is 6H plus another 6H right here in the middle. That's plus 12H. And then we have plus 4. Doing a little bit of FOIL method. Now, I assure you, um, let me pull the calculator back up. That, that's no different. I mean, I know it looks completely different than what we have typed in here. Um, in all honesty, it really doesn't because I did write 4,900 in here or type 4,900 in here. But if we take 3x plus 2 and we square it, we're going to get 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. So I'm going to go a little bit further though. I want to change the way this thing looks. And what I've told you in class is, is it's a good idea to force a zero sometimes. So let's move both of these values over. Let's subtract the h squared from both sides and let's also subtract the 4,900. Now what that does is it gives us zero over here. So we have zero equals 9h squared minus 1h squared is 8h squared plus 12h. And then if we take 4 minus 4900, we get negative 4896. All right, let's look at that one now. This equation looks completely different than this, but I assure you, you get the same two answers but they pop up a little bit different on our graph. And that's what I want to show you right now. So let's go to the calculator. Um, let's go to y equals. Wish I can get this light to look a little bit better. All right, so going to y equals, let's clear out what we have. And now let's type in uh, one side of the equation was zero. So I'm gonna put a zero. And let's type in the other side of our equation. 
8x squared plus 12x minus 4,896. So 8x squared uh, plus 12x. Remember, we have to use x instead of h. And then minus 4,896. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up here. I did this in a previous video. I'm moving my cursor over here to this flashing thing. I don't know if you can quite. There you go. You can see it flashing now. I'm going to press enter one time. And what that's going to do is it's going to bold that line. I want us to be able to see both of these equations. I made this bold because this is actually the equation of the x-axis. But if we look closely right here in a second, we're going to see that the x-axis is going to get more bold when I press graph. Now this right here is going to be a funky curve, and we want to, we want to find where this funky curve and the x-axis intersect. So I want to zoom 6 again, back to my standard screen. And let me make this a little bit, uh, get a little bit bigger here. All right, so let's zoom. Now watch, as soon as I press 6, watch the x-axis get bold. Look at that. See that line? All right, there's the x-axis. Now here's the thing. Where is our funky curve? I don't see our funky curve. Well, there's several things we can do. We can do zoom fit, or what I'm going to go ahead and do now, because I see one of my curves. The x-axis got bold because I made that line bold, but I want to see this funky curve here. So back on our graph, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and see what happens. Go to zoom. Let's go to zoom out and press enter one more time. Give it a second. There's the x-axis. And oh, there's one little curve. And there we go. Believe it or not, this right here is all one curve. It looks like two straight lines. But and I promise it's, it's all one curve. To prove that to you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom. And I'm going to zoom fit. All right. Zoom fit. Watch the x-axis. Look how it got bold. And now look at that smooth looking curve. The one that we just saw a few seconds ago where we had straight lines, that's the exact same curve. Now what we want to find, just like in the earlier part of this video, we want to find where this curve and that other curve, which was y equals zero, that's nothing but the x-axis, we want to find where they cross. We're interested in the x value but we don't want the negatives, we want the positives. So that's the one we're trying to find. Second trace, let's go to intersect. And now I'm just gonna move along this line. Notice I'm staying on the x-axis because that was what y1 was, y equals zero. But remember, you can always press up or down to jump between your curves. Now I'm on this, the funky curve. It don't matter, you can press up to jump back to the other one. But anyway, we're close to our intersection. Once we're close to it, we can press enter once, twice, three times, and look at that. Now our x is still 24. Yes, the y value changed. Don't worry about the y value for right now. Just understand, since we had h's in our equation and we were trying to find h, since we replaced h with the x, that's the answer that we're interested in. So there's another way of getting that same answer of 24 that we got back here, except I took this problem a little bit further. Now what I challenge you to do is I'll pause this video and try to work this out by factoring. Uh, you could do complete the square. You can do the quadratic formula. And I assure you what you end up doing is you end up getting two answers. Um, you'll get a positive one and a negative one. The one that we want is the positive because we're talking about the height of a tree. But I, I got a little carried away in this video showing you the stuff on the calculator, but I want you to practice with that. I want you to get good at, at zooming different places um, because before too long, I'm going to tack something else onto this TI-83, TI-84 for us to be able to handle big numbers with ease. But that is it for this video. Hope it helped.